kids, it's great to see you. I can't wait to see what God has in store for us today. This month, we're talking about responsibility. We're finding out how we can put that into practice every day. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. When we live with responsibility, we start to see the world the way God sees it. When we do what is expected of us, we also build trust with others. I trust that you're ready for the next challenge in our board game called River Kid Island. Last week, we landed in a kind of creepy looking forest. If we're responsible enough to complete today's challenge, we can move past the woods and move on to the next section of our board game. Today's challenge is a treasure hunt. Okay, so we need your help to solve the clues on our treasure hunt. So listen carefully, and if you think you know the answer, shout it out, okay? We have a few riddles for you, so let's see if you can figure out those riddles. If we can work together and solve five clues in two minutes, then we get to move forward on the board game. Do you think we can do it? Let's find out, okay? On your mark, get set, go. Here's the first riddle. You walked through this on your way in. Look on the top and you're sure to win. Do you know? A door frame? Yeah, nice job. Okay, here's the next one. Don't flip this while the clues you're pursuing. We need to be able to see what we are doing. Hmm. Don't flip this. Oh, oh. Is it a light switch? It is! Nice yeah. job, you got <laughs> it. All right, here's the next one. You look up here to know hours and minutes. Now turn it around and see what's in it. Hours and minutes. Would that be a clock? Yeah, you got it. Okay, here we go. You use one of these when you want to have a seat. Look underneath and your job is complete. Neat. Oh, hold on. Is it, is it a chair? It is, nice <laughs> job. Here's the next one. Rain or shine, snow or sleet, I hope you stopped here to wipe your feet. Maybe under a rug? Yeah. A rug? Yeah, like right when you walk in the door, you know. Wipe your feet. Okay. In here, you store what you want on the shelves. You'll also find treasure, so come help yourselves. Like a cabinet? Yeah, nice job. Yeah, I was thinking of the like Christmas actions, you know? All right, last clue. This is clue number seven, so hopefully we got to five already. Here's our last clue. Wash your hands with water and soap. In the room, you abide by this rule, I hope. In the bathroom? Yeah, I hope you wash your hands in the bathroom. That's absolutely correct. So guys, that was such great teamwork. We finished our challenge and we get to move ahead on our game board. It looks like we made it through the woods and into a desert? Oh no, that one will be our final challenge. It's all or nothing next week. Do you think we can make it to the finish line? I think we probably can. But now it's time for something I've looked forward to all week long. I'm ready to lift my voice and sing as we worship God together so everyone stand up. I want to make each day of 2021 count. Yes, I do. Each day is a new chance for us to share God's love with others. We know how much God loves us because he sent his son Jesus for us. Let's worship him right now as we sing. Come on. I can't stop singing, singing, singing about you. I can't stop shouting, whoa. I can't stop, I won't deny it. Nothing's ever gonna keep me quiet.
our memory verse for this month is Luke 16, 10. Suppose you can be trusted with something very little. Then you can also be trusted with something very large. Luke 16, 10. All right, let's practice that together one more time. Suppose you can be trusted with something very little. Then you can also be trusted with something very large. Luke 16, 10. All right, keep practicing. But now it's time for our story. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. When Jesus wanted to share truth with the people that followed him, he often would tell a parable, a story. Here is what the kingdom of heaven will be like. These parables used everyday situations to help people think and understand God's truth for themselves. One day in Jerusalem, Jesus wanted to share a story with his followers. If he told that same story today, it might sound something like this. There once was a man who created the world's most amazing energy bar. Just one bite and I feel like I could leap tall buildings in a single bound. What is even in these? If I told you, I'd have to leave you stranded on top of Mount Everest. The man did such a good job of selling the energy bars, he soon became wealthy. Then one day, he got on a Zoom call with three of his top employees. Zane, Ren, Murray. Yes, sir. Right here. Murray. Says he's here. I don't hear him. Start your audio, Murray. Oh. Hey, just, you know, I was finishing the movie. I've called you together for an important purpose. I'm going offline. You're what? A completely screen free. I'm going to travel the world for a while. Hike Everest, cross the Sahara, dive down to the Mariana Trench, miles beneath the ocean, all fueled by my energy bar, of course. Dude, that is far out. Literally. The rich man had carefully studied his employees and knew what they could handle. While I'm gone, I'm leaving you in charge of my money. Zane, I'm sending you an encrypted key to access my gold account with 5,000 credits. Oh, excellent. Ren, here's an encrypted key to access my silver account with 2,000 credits. I'm on it. Murray. Check your inbox for an encrypted key to my bronze account with 1,000 credits. That's it? That's it. I'm going off the grid. Immediately, Zane accessed the money from the gold account and put that money to work. He hired scientists and designers to create a suction shoe that would keep a rock climber from falling. I call it the fly shoe. The fly shoe sold as nearly as fast as the energy bar. Zane soon made his money back and more. Ren. Meanwhile, made excellent use of the money in the silver account. What does every adventurer need besides fuel and shoes? A friend. So Ren invented a robotic hamster that could travel anywhere an explorer can go, from the highest of mountains to the deepest ocean trench. Soon, robotic adventure hamsters sold as fast as toilet papers. So that left only Murray, who sat looking at the bronze account on his computer screen. Only 1,000. It's like he expects me to mess it up. Well, I'll show him, ha! Huh. So Murray took the money out in coins and stashed them in a giant bag. Then late one night, dug a hole in his backyard, stashed the bag inside, and covered it right back up. Great, now all I have to do is go back inside and watch Netflix. After a very long time, the rich man returned from the wilds. Ah, electricity, internet. I have returned to the grid. Please accept my meeting invite. Zane and Ren hopped on the call immediately. Murray took a little longer. Start, Start your audio, Murray. Oh yeah, there it is. I'm excited to see how you've handled my money, Zane. Through sales of the fly shoe, I've added 5,000 more credits to your gold account. Well done, good and faithful employee. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. 
Now, Ren. My adorable traveling robotic hamsters have earned 2,000 more credits for your silver account. Well done, good and faithful employee. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. <laughs> so, uh, Murray. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, hold on. Murray reached down and held up a muddy sack. He spilled the coins across the desk. How much is that? 1,000 credits. That's what I gave you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I knew you're a tough businessman. You, you make money even where you haven't worked for it. I didn't want you getting mad, so I just buried the money. See? It's all safe. Murray offered a weak smile, but instead of smiling back, the rich man went red in the face. You lazy man. If you knew I can make money even when I haven't worked for it, you should have at least kept my money in the bank where it would have earned a little bit. Uh, sure. The rich man turned to his personal assistant and ordered. Take Murray's credits and give them to Zane, who already has 10,000 credits. Oh, and, and take Murray off my payroll immediately. The message of Jesus' story was clear. If you are responsible for what you were given, You'll be given more. If you wasted it, you end up with nothing. The boss in Jesus' story gave each of his servants a gift, and he expected them to be responsible with it while he was gone. It didn't matter how much or how little each servant had been given. What mattered is what they did with it. That's what we need to remember today. In fact, it's a great rule for life. We need to make the most of what God has given us. That's our bottom line. Make the most of what you've been given. Think about all of the things that God has given you. Maybe he's giving you a talent, like you're a really good artist or really great at a sport. He's given you friends and family who love you and every day you can choose how to treat them. In every situation, let's make the most of what we've been given. Let's pray and ask God to help us. God, I pray you'd please help us make the most of everything you've given us and every opportunity we have. I pray that we would be responsible enough to work hard, to do our best, and to just use everything you've given us to succeed at life and your plan for us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The story Jesus told his disciples reminded me of this month's memory verse, Luke 16, 10. Suppose you can be trusted with something very little, then you can also be trusted with something very large. That was definitely true in today's story. Two of the servants were responsible with the money that their boss gave them. They worked hard and made even more money and the boss rewarded them. But the servant who did nothing and buried his gold, he was sent away. God is like the boss in the story and we're like those he's entrusted with bags of gold. Like the first two servants, we can make the wise choice. We can be responsible and make the most that, of what's been given to us. That's what we need to remember today in our bottom line. Make the most of what you've been given. If you think about it, Jesus made the most of his time with people. He showed love to everyone and helped them understand what's most important to God. Everything we have comes from God, and he wants us to make the most of what he's given us. Whether it's your allowance, your talents, your friendships, God wants you to make the most of it all. He wants us to use what we have in order to show his love to others. Okay, boys and girls, it's time for our blessing. Please stand up, close your eyes, and hold out your hands like you are about to receive a gift. Boys and girls, may you learn to make the most of what God gave you. May you take what talents, abilities, and gifts you've been given, work hard, and make them multiply. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all the time we have for today. See you next week for our last week of the series and our last time playing River Kids Island. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, so just from the okay. top. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Hello, River Kids. 
It's great to see you. <laughs> Matt! Responsibility is showing that you can be trusted with a whoa. We're finding out how we can put into Slow down. All right, here's the next one. Rain or sh I want to make each day of 2020 count. Nope, 21. Oh, I didn't even say 2020. <laughs> Bye. 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 All right.